Hi, welcome to another quick tip from Think Creative TV. Hope that you enjoy this, and if you do, it'd be great if you could subscribe and click the like button below. But let's get started with our tip of the day. Okay, so let's jump in and take a look at how to get started with Class Notebook in Teams. So let's go ahead and find our Teams app on our iPad. And when we first go in, uh, you'll see something similar to this. I've got some Teams already set up. We're gonna start with a brand new team go through the whole process um, and then look at how we would then get our class notebook set up. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and create a new team. And I want this team to be a class. Okay, so then I'm going to be using this with my students. So I would need to choose the class uh, template. And then I need to give this a name. So we'll just call it our class for the moment. Um, and then you can put in a description and you know this this class is about X, Y, or Z. Um, that's completely optional. I'm just going to click through to done. And whilst that's just creating that team, it's going to give me a couple of options of who I want to have in my team. Now, obviously, I'm going to want to have students in my team. Um, but there's also the option here if you are co-teaching, uh, you might want to have oversight by somebody else into uh, that class. And that's completely your choice as to, as to whether you want to give people those access. Obviously, that might be the setup in your school um, where you want that external person to have oversight. But it's really useful to know that this is something that can be shared with other staff members as well. Don't put them in as students because they have a completely different experience of that. So I'm just going to start to type in the name of one of the students so that I can add them into my team. And I'm going to tap down. Now you can add students in at a later point as well. Um, so you can skip this step if you want to. I'm just going to add this person in now just to, to get ourselves going. So I tap done, and that's now creating our class team. As you can see down here, I have my class. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the team setup of this, but if you've seen other videos, you'll know that you can manage channels, add in extra members of, of the team, etc., have tags. And then over here, we know that we can create posts. This is kind of our social media kind of interaction where we can create new posts, um, add pictures, and, and you know, add people, etc., Here's where we can add in our files, but what we're going to look at in this video is the class notebook. So I'm going to tap on more and you'll see now that this, this is a separate option. So if you've gone into any of the other ones, professional learning um, or just a, a PLN type thing, you won't get all of these options. This is specific because I've asked this to be a class. We'll take a look at assignments and grades and notes um, in other videos, but first we're just going to take a look at the class notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on this. Now, because I'm working on my iPad in this situation, it's going to give me the option to set up my OneNote class notebook. I'm just going to go with a blank one. It's going to go through all the steps of what I want that notebook to look like. So this is really, really useful to, to sort of go through as, as you're creating your notebooks. In this instance, um, it just talks through the, the kind of basic elements of your class notebook. So your collaboration space where everybody can edit, okay? This is that kind of shared workspace, really, really good for blended learning, those sorts of activities, because everyone has access to that same space. I might add things in as a teacher, I want students to add things, you know, people might go off and do their own bits of research, and we can compile everything into one place. And of course, we'll have a look at how you can separate that if I want to have different workspaces for different groups. Content library, that's teacher controlled, so I can add the content and edit. Students can only view this, so think it could be timetables, it could be um, assignment overviews, could be module overviews. It's the stuff that I want to share with the group, but I don't necessarily want them to be able to change any of those things. And then finally, we have our student notebooks. I can edit those things, student can edit those things, but students don't get to see each other's. Okay, so this is a private space between myself and the student where we can have dialogue, we can do marking, uh, we can answer questions, etc. So, um, you know, this is a separate entity. Although on your notebook, you will see every student in your class. On their notebook, they will only see their own notebook. So I tap next. And then I can start to think about my sections. How do I want to set this up for each of the students? Now, each of these can be renamed. You can choose what goes into them. These are just the, the overviews that they give you from, from the setup guide. And there's some really, really useful things to just start off with. So, you know, handouts, this is the stuff I want the students to have access to. 
uh, class notes. This is our discussion from the class. Here's some homework or home learning or whatever you might want to call it. Uh, you know, activities I want you to do, and just some basic quizzes. You know, so so actually, the the sections titles here are a good start point. But you might have something more bespoke for your class, or it might not be an actual teaching class that you're using this for. This could be like an extracurricular club, and it, you might want to put completely different things into this space. And of course, you can add in your own sections as well. I'm going to stick with the four just so we can go through what they look like when we create the class. And the second I cl click create, it's going to create this class notebook for me. So once it goes through that whole process, it's just compiling all the data that I've put into, you know, how I want my class notebook to look. It's adding in those student names. Um, it's adding in a separate section for each one of those students, etc. And once that's done, it's going to take me through to class notebook. Now, like I said, this is an app. So this is a separate app on my device. I'm not doing this in the browser. This is an app on the device, um, which I've pre-downloaded. And you'll see it's just creating now all of that information for me. And we'll go through each one of these sections um, in turn, just to have a look at what that looks like. So if I just tap back a second, you'll see that here is my class. Uh, it's created this welcome page, and this is standard for each. Good advice to probably leave this in. Uh, you could delete this, you could you could change the wording, but actually, you know, having that overview for your students of, of what the, the class notebook, how it operates, etc., is quite a useful thing. Um, and again, you know, this kind of overview here. Um, it's just good practice, I think, to leave these things in place. But you could also add an extra page, and we'll have a look at that in a second, um, a specific welcome to your class. It's created that collaboration space for me, and again, it gives you this really right, nice overview of what each section is about, what you can do in each section. And again, you can add more pages if you need to. And then I've got my content library. And again, like we said before, uh, this is the place where I'm going to be able to share things with the students for them to be able to access. And I've only added one student at the moment, but you'll see that that student is now listed here. And if I go to the drop down arrow, you'll see that those four spaces are here for that student to be able to access. So class notes, handouts, anything that I've shared, homework and quizzes. So that's that's the basic setup for class notebook. That's how to get started with it. Tune into the other videos and we'll take a look in more detail about how we can then actually operate each one of these things. We'll take a look at adding in new sections, adding in new pages and some of the options that you have across the top here.